All right, before we kind of continue on, I just wanted to jump in and cover one more nice little feature that comes in handy a little bit at least. So I've opened up a test script of mine. It's red versus blue, essentially. It's a deathmatch um, map scenario. <clears throat> and let's say I want to test this. Um, there's no real good way to test it unless you do it in-game and see if... Space Engineers just craps out on you or it doesn't work correctly. Uh, but to test for really critical errors, uh, you can hit Shift F5 on the key. There we are. Shift F5, and that'll open the Builder Tester window. And then you can hit F5 and wait a four or five seconds at least. There we go. And then we're going to open up a test script here. That's... Um, this script here, where, but you got to reopen it. So, and it's going to go ahead and compile it out to whatever it uses in game. So, um, it can give you an error here if it's something very critical, but not necessarily. If you're perhaps missing like a link here, a lot of times it's not going to catch that. You, you know, you won't get it until you get in the game and it errors out as a good player name thing here. So, <clears throat> that's something to keep in mind. There's not a whole lot of run testing on this to catch errors. So, all right, so let's go ahead and open up some Space Engineers here. And we're going to do a new game. Um, and we'll do a custom game. Uh, and this was actually, Protect the Core this was actually created in creative mode, a new game, uh, Empty World. Saved it, copied it over into. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. And I hope this desktop audio isn't too loud. Maybe I'll turn it down just a little bit and try that. Okay. Um, I opened it up and copied everything over into content, custom worlds, protect the core, desktop final. And there it is with all your test scripts and everything. And I actually attached the test script to the sandbox.spc file. <clears throat> and there we are. So, um, Again, remember, if you're creating it from an empty world, make sure it's offline uh, so that if it's online, it doesn't work. So, uh, same thing here as well. It needs to be an offline. Um, if you want to make changes, I should say. If you want to make changes to it, it needs to be an offline. So, we'll go ahead and load this. And you'll, know, oh, you'll notice here that I have custom text, the 22222. Two, 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 two. That was actually added when we attached it to, uh, let's just, sure, let's just say, when we attached it to here, we added loading text, that's loading text, you can also add a loading image as well, so, and you can also add a state machine, but let's go back into here, uh, this was the first time I was loading it, so this might take a little while to load, let's see what else we got to cover. Uh, so a little bit about this uh, scripting stuff. Um, uh, the events here, you can see we have an event spawned. Um, we have uh, on the update tick, it's running a sequence that's branching. Let's look for the winning condition. Uh, and then another sequence that checks if a block is functional. Uh, that sort of stuff. Now, the this runs every tick, but we are using branching statements so that it'll at least hit the branching statement and won't go through the entire thing. But this is a basic setup sort of thing, so let's see if this is loaded. Looks like that's a no. Um, so, oh, it's doing its thing. Hold on. I actually have an SSD for my OS partition, but or my OS drive, uh, but I have a standard platter for all my games, so it can take a while to load. So back here, um, yeah, basic setup. It's going to show notification. It's going to set grid grids to non-editable, and we have a lot of trigger blocks here, error triggers that do things. So that's pretty much it. So, <clears throat> now we're in here. Whenever you load for the first t 
time, I always double click F11 right away and check your level scripts to make sure it's running. I want to make sure it attached correctly and that the test script is running, or your script, I should say, is running. If you have state machines, it'll also run there, so. First thing I'll notice is these large red orbs, and you can see the tons of ones down there. Those are actually effect, as far as I can tell, like effect part parts. Those are all engines that are giving throwing off effects, so. Now if we look in here, you can see kind of a core and then a red around it. Well, if we go into it, we can see that selected trigger, well, we don't have it, it's like their admin trigger. It turns yellow when it's selected. So it shows a trigger and an entity. The entity is actually the middle part and the trigger is the auto part. So let's go here and dun 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 and we will spawn an entity and it kind of spawns it right in front of you and you'll notice it has uh, translation there and that means that you can drag if you hit the R, it kind of shows your rotation and translation. It switches it if you hit R. You can also disable that, and that means you can't move it at all. The reason you would have it disabled is if you you can grab, like this is a selected entity, this is ptc.training. This is the entire base, and you can accidentally translate the entire base by accident, which you don't want. So, always make sure that you're selecting what you want. Now, it also created waypoint zero as the name you obviously want to you know change that and if I don't have disabled transfer information selected it, it keeps on every time I hit the T key it's gonna or R key it's gonna switch that but we'll call this test entity hit confirm so now that we have an entity and we disable that's an entity right there and uh, that is what you reference in the script. You always go by this name right here. So, or the selected block if you have a block, but we'll talk about that later. Now, triggers. We can say we have a selected entity. We can say attached to selected entity. We'll call it test trigger confirm. Now, it's technically attached to the entity, but it's not. As you can see, it's kind of outside. And since you're trying to trigger, a lot of times you're trying to trigger. Um, the uh, entity, or you're trying to set the trigger where the entity is, you can just do snap. Um, oh dear. I had PTC training and I just snapped it to that. So, it's, if we go outside, okay, so now let's see, we don't have any triggers select. No, oh, we have admin trigger selected. Whatever. There we go. Bam. Alright, so now we have trigger test trigger and entity test entity so we can see that this is the trigger here and that's the entity inside of it and we can manipulate the size and we can delete it so <clears throat> now entities oh cool Uh, it's a little bit unstable, kind of when you're running scripting sometimes. Not ter too bad, but entities are very useful for getting positions of something. Unless you have the GPS coordinate like hard-coded in or anything, just grab the entity. Um, do, 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 let me reload, reload, reload. <clears throat> so, um, you'll notice in the script... Do, 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 You'll notice in the script, I get entity position for admin TP, and that's how I teleport players. So, if they click or they enter the red trigger area, uh, I get their faction tag, and as long as it's um, if it's equal to red, or if it's not equal to red, if it's false, not equal to red, I set their player faction to red. I do a notice saying they have joined the red team. And I send a notification to all, and then I get an entity position for red teleport, and I set the player's position to that location. So, that's something to keep in mind. So, let's go back F11 twice. Alright. Alright. So, can you do a trigger without an entity? Um, I suppose so. I've always had entities inside of the triggers though so I'm not uh, I'm not entirely sure so this is for example this is triggers a blue trigger and the entity is a blue trigger entity 
So this is when players, when we open the doors, the players can walk through here and they will enter the blue trigger and they will actually be spawned in the, an entity in the blue base. So. Uh, so let me see. Now, uh, selected block gets a little interesting. Let's go ahead and, oh, and for the controls for this, it's WASD, um, C to go down, space, it's kind of like you're flying. Scroll, mouse scroll, it's, this is basically spectator mode, I think. Um, scroll forward, goes faster, scroll backwards, goes slower. And let's see, let's zoom in on the red base. Hold on. I'm on the newer version of the map now, so I forget this map. So now we're, the purpose of the game is to destroy or disable this beacon. So let's say we want to have that in our script, you know, we want to be able to test if this is functional. Sometimes these can be really tricky to click on. Fortunately, I got lucky right away. But you notice the selected entity is PTC dot red core. Uh, the selected block is PTC dot red beacon. So you're saying, well, that's the in-game name, right? Well, it can be, and in fact, it is. However, the point is, you can't actually call in-game blocks by default. You literally, you have to select them, and you have to hit rename, and then name it correctly for it to call in the script. The script doesn't just grab any random block. It only grabs blocks that have been manipulated by the scripting editor, those scripting tools, I should say. So so when you select something like that, always name it PTC. Like this is PTC.RedBeacon. If we go back to our script here and we go to our end game testing, this is PTC.RedBeacon. We have the name listed out there exactly. I don't know if caps matters or not, but I don't take any chances. Just make sure that's the case. <clears throat> and that's how you can manipulate blocks from the um, uh, from the scripting editor. So if you wanted to select this small reactor, you would rename and you would say, it doesn't matter what you call red react. Hit confirm. And then that's how you would call it in the script. So how is that? Whatever, this is an older version of the map. Uh, and that's how you would select it in the script in here. So if you wanted to do something with it, you would enter that in. So, um, so let's say, um, actually, let me see, is this running the exact for? No, we'd have to attach it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, it's not my night with the, the space engineers, huh? Alright, so let's do... Uh, oh, what did I call that? Oh, I didn't save it anyway. doesn't matter. Oh, and that's another thing uh, I, that should probably mention. If you're running it from there, you're going to be saving it as a save game, which is not going to be in your content structure. So any changes you'll have to make. I usually have two of them. Um, I'll have something, these are all in, oh geez. Oops. Uh, so these are all in like my save folder structure, but, um, and they're running scripts. Uh, there's sorry, there's no running level scripts because I can't attach them to saved games. So even though these are saved, no running level scripts will work. But if we go to new game, this is the same thing essentially. <clears throat> this is a campaign. We're, we kind of covered that, I believe, in the last one. Hopefully, <clears throat> again, you can see the custom text. Now this one, you can see it, it, this is a chat message, prepare to die, and you can see it's running a level script right there. So you can see it's sort of, uh, that one does work, but like I said with this, you can save it, but you can't make changes to the map itself, like naming entities for, with the scripting tool, you can't make any changes, and then if you save it, it'll go to a save file. You'll have to copy that save file back into the content 
and then reattach the script to it. Uh, I'm not sure about the reattach part as long as it's named the same. No, that won't. I'm pretty sure you have to reattach the script to it manually uh, because the script actually, when you attach the script to it, it creates a line in the SBC file. So you'll need to reattach the script, relaunch it, or reload the level at least. Um, and go from there. So it's a little bit of a complicated process. I, there might be an easier way to do it. Again, like I said, there's no documentation on this, so I'm kind of making this up as I go along. Um, but anyway, that's that. Um, all right, let's see. All right, so let's just cover kind of a little bit of the functionality of this here in case there's uh, anything I kind of haven't covered. So <clears throat> this happens whenever a player spawns. If the game, this is a branching, so it's comparing started game. Is started game false, which it, it is by default uh, because started game starts out as false. Then it shows a notification saying, welcome to PTC, see the LCD screens for more info. Uh, and it gives you a disappear time, and you can change that um, by a variable input string message for the message as well. None of that is needed. Now, <clears throat> we'll cover events first. So these are all events. These are the start game and um, open doors. So actually, we might be able to cover that unless Space Engineers crashes on us. All right, so. All right, let's zoom out to our admin thing here. Now if we go to Alright, so you can see the selected block is called Start Game and this one is called Open Doors. That's something I manually added uh, onto these by hitting the rename button so that they could be called in the script. So as you can see uh, Start Game and Open Doors, those are specific uh, events. So this is actually an event called timer block trigger. So hey, all you got to do is go in here and manually create these timer blocks and then just rename them in here and then once they're triggered, I trigger them using this panel. So <clears throat> once they're triggered, then the script takes over and shows a notification to all. Um, this one you know, changes the door states, it opens the doors and then uh, gives a notification to all to start game. Uh, Shows a notification all, then removes an entity called PTC Training, which is actually literally that entire starting base. So once the game has started, uh, this right here, this is an entity. See, now the block is different versus an entity. Now the entity is PTC.Training, as I named in here by hitting rename. Even if it's called PTC.Training in game, you gotta hit rename and rename it. Uh, so um, that is remove entity, and then the entity name is PTC at training, and then set the started game to true, which means once that's true, then this does nothing. The player spawn does nothing. And okay, so this is ha the update. Like I said, it's a sequence. It doesn't sequence, but it only hits the branching until winning and setup are done. So this is the original setup. Uh, so that's pretty much it. The other stuff, the red trigger and the blue trigger are just for teleportation. So that should about cover it.